Hi guys, so I've had a couple of requests recently um, for some different things. I think in this one I'm going to put a couple things together, which are the large uh, background stamps from Crafters Companion, and also uh, just a quick review of possibly the um, the box dies, the box making dies, which this is a rectangle rectangle box, and I have the square box. I've already done a video on the hexagon box, and there are very small boxes, especially the hexagon ones, but um, what people were wanting to do with these is like if you have a card that's a little bit thick you can put it in these to give to somebody instead of you know making an envelope or whatever however you want to do it um I, I don't know what i think about these like i said i saw a review on hsn um on this one in particular that said it doesn't really fit a standard a2 size card or like a five by seven and if you read the box here it looks like the finish size is 6.14 by four inches 4.1 so a 5 by 7 it's too big <laughs> right uh, 4 and 3 and basically a third by 2 and a third so that's not good for a standard A2 size card so I guess if you did A2 you'd probably want to put it in the 6.1 by 4.1 because and even at that because uh, an A2 size card is 4 and a quarter inches right so I don't know what point one I would think it should be four point like two something we will see either way I bought these from Crafts Companion I'm not going to return them I did buy them the big bundle from HSN and I have it ready to go I told you guys you have until the end of January anything you bought October 1st through now uh well through basically the end of December you can return until the end of January so if you bought something now you still have a whole month which is past January but what's extra during like holiday time is that they give you an extra um basically three months to return your stuff instead of just the month the 30 days so I'm gonna open that up this one is gonna be basically the same but it's squares and these squares are 6.1 inch squares 4.35 inch squares and then 2.6 inch squares so I guess if you have a card that's a six inch square which sometimes we do that'll work or five inch square and the bigger guy uh about four inch square and then like a two and a half inch square up to that size so this is okay if you have square cards I think that's not gonna be a problem but I also wanted to try out even better these large background stamps I know when I got them when I hauled them I tried it out real quick like in a little section kind of show you guys how to use it real fast but what I want to do is use one of these to cut out the box top so that it has a design so we're just going to use plain paper if even if it's colored and maybe I'll do like a colored paper with this uh, maybe craft paper or something cute like that we'll see um, we can stamp this out and then maybe use something for an accent. We'll see about that part. Um, so I have this one that's really pretty, uh, newspaper collage. And the only reason I'm doing this again is because they're still selling these on Crafts Companion website. They're still selling them like at really great deals. And of course you always have your discount plus maybe some coupons that you might have. Script collage. And then we have um, this really pretty one, Oriental Peony, which uh, Craig used yesterday, I think, in one of their Crafters TV things. Oh, bummer, they're not letting people talk on those again. Um, they used to open the chat, and then they closed it back again, which is kind of a bummer, because it's nice to kind of talk, especially since they don't really answer your questions on YouTube. Uh, we can kind of help each other out, but right now they haven't been doing it for the last few weeks, so I'm assuming that's their default position. But Craig did a really pretty card using this as a background, but then he stamped this guy this flower here and then stamp like extra leaves on it and then do like a decoupage type thing so he built it up and then decoupage the leaves too with, with like a second layer and kind of made it a focal point it was really pretty but um so check that out if you would like but i think i'm gonna use this one i always end up using this one don't i, I think this is one i tried out last time well, maybe maybe not it looks pretty clean so we're gonna stamp that this time i do have this the foam background this big huge foam stamping pad from crafters companion um i had bought some of their stamping platforms like these guys and I bought them however I felt like if they were on sale I didn't get like a bundle on all of them at once so um, I do have two of the foam pads I'm gonna give one away when I do our giveaway very soon I'm totally I'm sorry I was waiting for 5,000 subscribers now I'm over that and then you know the holidays came in so I'm a little behind on that but I will get that going sorry about the lighting oh this shadow right here this it's my tripod I try to get out of the way it just doesn't doesn't do it um and so I'll be using the big, big platform just because it is, uh, I think it's an eight inch square. Yeah. So basically it'll stamp that whole thing at one time, hopefully. And then, um, we're going to stamp it out and then we will get, uh, we'll cut it out. Uh, something that has to do with like the, uh, the rectangle box. Okay. But I'm trying to fix this here. Okay. So to prepare this, we need to get this guy out. I think I got these finally for like 
under 20 bucks and I thought that was a good deal because they kept wanting I think I got for like $17 but right now you can find them sometimes on their website for like 15 bucks I know they just put them on sale right now if you see this today because they just had a um, that crafters TV thing but uh, today meaning January 14th <laughs> so we have to peel this off and these are photopolymer. I know someone asked me to make a video on the difference, but um, I'll try and do that. But I don't, you know, obviously the formulation of the plastic is different, but photopolymer should not yellow. I was going to say does not yellow, but I think some of the older ones still yellowed even with the sunlight, but they still stamp really well. And it just picks up the ink really, really well. That's the difference in my opinion. An acrylic stamp lets your ink beat up and sometimes it just comes off and it's a lower quality stamp. When we first started with cling stamps, I feel like they were always photopolymer, and then someone came up with acrylic to make it cheaper, basically. Um, because I never had so many issues back in the day, but um, anyway. So like a red rubber stamp, I mean, those are awesome, but you can't see through it, right? So that's the issue with that. But I'm going to turn this over, and I'm just going to place it on my hand. I don't care if it's straight or not, but you do have guides that will help you. This is really sticky, and that's the other nice thing about photopolymer. So as you can see, it is a little bit crooked. Maybe you can see. I can see that. <laughs> But that's okay, because all we're going to do is stamp on some paper. And let me grab a piece of craft paper, since it's right here and I had not prepared yet. Uh, let's see. And I think this particular craft paper is from Hobby Lobby. And I'm not even sure if I would really cut craft paper. It's very brown. It's a little bit darker than even craft paper. But I'm going to place it on here. Again, I don't really care how straight or not it is, but I still will try to get it a little bit straight. And then... Where are my brown inks? I will stamp with um, our quick dry and fire brown. Let me see how brown this fire brown is. Uh, that's pretty good. Okay, so I have quick dry ink in fryer brown. And I'm just gonna ink this up as much as I can because we do want the whole thing. I don't know how, and maybe, well, I guess it's going to dictate how big my, uh, oh, what do I want to say? Oh, which box I cut because, again, you can layer this up. If it's not enough, you can do another stamping of it. I'm going to put it off to the very back corner. Ooh. As much as I can here, just in case. That way, if I have to do a little more stamping, I will. So I'm just going to push this down. And I did a review on these stamping platforms, and uh, it already has a couple thousand views. I did not have the mat at the time, so I'm really trying to help use that to help me push down. And if you miss a spot, it will definitely show that you missed a spot. So I'm really trying to push down on this whole thing. And suppose you can line it up again, but like I wasn't paying attention to where I lined this up, so it's not going to be that easy for me if I want to line it up again. But hey, that's pretty good. I think I got it. Ooh. What's interesting though, like as I'm looking at it, it's really dark in here, like the script, and then it's a lot lighter on the edges. Can you see that? Like the differentiation in the color, which is odd because I use the same stamping. Look at that, it's a little weaker here, a little darker there. That is odd. Huh, I wonder what that's from. Anyway, um, okay, so we have that. And I would just wash off that <laughs> uh, pad, of course. Now let's open up this little guy. So what's cute about this one, it does make two sizes. They said they all make three sizes, I think, when they present it on HSM, but they don't. So the only one that makes three sizes, I think, is the square. Because the hexagon also, I think, only does two sizes, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, um, it comes with, like, little tag ones, too. Little tags that you can cut out. So there's some extra pieces in there. But only two of them actually make the boxes and again I forgot to mention the top which I've already done a review on these they are double-sided dies so you do need the cutters for double-sided dies and I'll show you that right now what I mean by that the plates I did order a large plate set I initially ordered from HSM but then they were way cheaper on crafter companion sites so again we have until the end of January to return so those are packed up ready actually I didn't even open it because I didn't need to use it yet so I'll be returning them but so when we open it up, we have the three, the two sets. And then I, I was originally going to do this with the um, Crafters Companion Ultimate Pro because somebody asked me if I can make more videos on that. So I will definitely look into that. What I want to see about this, um, oh, I'll make that video this week, hopefully, is if I can cut this out on this, I don't want to bust out. Yes, awesome. So, okay, 
the other thing <laughs> with these double-sided box dies. The only other one that you need to have with the large size plates, and I have some examples here. So this is the two-piece Gemini Junior cutting plates for double-sided dies. This is the regular Gemini Junior size, and you can run these through the large Gemini too. Um, is this the Gemini plates for double-sided dies for the large Gemini. So this is for the big boy. So it's two plates, supposedly they're carbon fiber, they will never destruct, and they're pretty good. I mean, the ones I have that I've already used are really sturdy. So this is awesome. So I'm just going to use my Junior. I have a bunch of stuff on top of this Gemini Junior. Let me move all these things. Ah, look at all these things I have just sitting on top of it. I've been cleaning up this week because this room is a disaster and I can't even sit down. So, which I kind of like to stand and work here. I, my table is a husky workbench and I think I did a video on it for, for, for you guys if you want to check that out. But let's use this larger piece. So we'll make a bigger box and then I'll show you how a card doesn't fit in it. <laughs> or hopefully it does. I mean, hopefully it's just, you know, so. So when you're looking at this, again, double-sided. So on this side, the there's a cutting element that goes right to the edge, okay? I don't know if you can see that. There's the cutting um, edges, right? This is gonna be the top of your box. So this side is the top of your box, okay? Because you want it to be a slightly bigger than the bottom so it slides on top very nicely. So the very edge, that's the top of your box. Um, I don't know if there's any other way to differentiate, it, differentiate that. When you look on the other side, the cutting edge is away from the very edge, okay? There's like a little gap here and then there's cutting edge. That will be for the bottom of your box. So I'm just gonna look at this. Oh, there's a lot of cute things, but too bad that the cute things are over on this side here. Um, so maybe what I'll do is I'll put it here, because at least I can catch. Or, Yeah, well, no, no, yeah, it's going to have to be... I'm going to put it right to the edge of my inking, so that I know all that will have something. There's like a little lady over here in this corner, that's kind of what I'm trying to catch. And I'm going to put ooh, a little bit of tape. Actually, this doesn't matter, so because what happens is when I put the tape... If I put it here, our other paper is going to cut right through it. I need another piece of cardstock or whatever it is that you want to use, a different color. Ooh, should we use a different color completely? Let's go with black. I think that'll be fun. So, I actually need to trim this down, don't I? Because I want it to fit on my Gemini Junior. So I'm just going to cut this down. Kind of fussy cut there. I guess I should probably measure it and make sure. See, it's a little bit big still. And then I'm just going to trim this down a little bit. So the tape is not even anything that's going to help me at this moment. <laughs> I guess we could tape it towards the inside. But again, if you tape it towards the inside, you're going to cut it off anyway because of the... This is actually only a... Um, the only thing that's cutting is on around the very edges. So I guess if you really want to put tape, you can put it on this part here. In this inner part and it'll hold on I'll try to leave a little bit of the thing here okay so for this one you're gonna use a cutting plate the sandwich is cutting plate I, I wear my thing here they are and I've been using these over and over and over obviously that's what they're meant for they are pretty straight this one's a little bit bowed but it's not a big deal and I've been cutting on both sides basically one side more than the other Maybe at this time I'll turn it around. So cutting plate, your regular cutting plate. You have your carbon fiber one. You have this guy. And then we're going to put this paper facing down onto the other cutting surface. And then our other carbon fiber plate. And then finally your last cutting plate, the regular. So the sandwich is only basically all cutting plates, right? So I've already turned this on. Ooh, sounds great. It's because remember I told you that one was bowed a little bit and I took it upside down, so it bowed back and it really made a crackly sound for me. Okay, good. I had a hot glue gun also sitting on top of the Junior and I'm like, oh, I better not be plugged in. So let's see if this worked. That looks pretty good. Yeah, all right. Um, they both cut. The embossing lines are very faint on this one, so just so you know. And I'm going to take this off. Let's go ahead and assemble the box, and then we will see about adding tags if we want to use the tags. But 
I do have some cards here that should be standard A2 size cards so we can see if it fits, but this is our base. Again, um, you can fold them forward, backward, however you think. I'm folding the score lines, how oh, you can see them are right there. And I'm folding away from them, you know. Oopsie. So this black paper is from uh, Recollections and it's super cheap. Have you guys ever tried their black paper? I think it's the worst paper of the Recollections lineup, you know, their cardstock, because they have other colors and they're fine or like their floral stack or citrus stack. I do like them, but this one for me is really flimsy and it feels really horrible. But let me show you a good one if you are ordering from Crafters Companion anyway. I know a lot of people are cutting back just because sometimes their customer service or they don't include things and it's just a pain to call them all the time. But this matte black cardstock is amazing. It's 300 GSM and it's like super thick. It's good stuff. All right. So that's our box base. And again, you also want to fold these little tabs in. I was say, it was very, very faint and I don't like having lines that aren't like really nice, especially with box making. Like this one feels like it should be out a little bit that way. So that's kind of a bummer. It did cut, I mean, in one pass, but it just, some of it didn't emboss as well. And you really can't do anything about that. I wouldn't, I mean, I, I don't know that I would include like a metal shim or anything like that. I probably wouldn't. Okay, and this is what's funny. I can never find my... I say, of course, I can never find it. I have this Crafters Companion tape with the dots. You really, for this, would want the solid line one, but I'm just going to use these dots. The dotted one. Flip this back out for a second. And just put a ton of it on the very little edges. This one's good. Obviously, it has a good grip, but um, the point of this one is that you can use it to hold together like um, very delicate like let's say you have like this like a die cut like this obviously you want to stick it down so you can turn it over and just roll over it with this thing because it's just little tiny dots so those little tiny dots will hold on to the little areas where it touches paper but if you have it on a surface like you know then you're gonna turn it over and put it on a card it won't stick to the areas where there isn't paper so it looks really nice and neat and if you use just a runner that's just straight it's gonna leave like that little residue like it looks like you, you can still see it right so there's our base again not too deep guys this is a very shallow little box let me see how Ooh, that was an ugly noise it is just over half an inch deep not even three quarters of an inch so just over half an inch deep and we'll do the same for this top hmm this is interesting okay so on their double-sided dies, let me show you something. Um, where is it? <laughs> where is the die? Oh, goodness. Oh, it's right here. <laughs> it's right next to me. So this area inside, it has scoring lines that are supposed to get embedded into your paper. But like on this opposite side, it has a scoring line, but then it has the actual metal piece, right? The metal that's inside. So now you have a scoring line and that metal trying to score itself into your paper because of the way it gets pushed in there. So this one wants to bend in two places, which is kind of a bummer because I don't know if you can see these lines. There's a line right here and then there's another one. See right there, two. You need to fold it on the outer line. Okay, because if you look, it really matches up with the very edge. Oy, what a bummer. This is, I don't like that at all. <laughs> Ugh. So you have to be very careful when doing this and then definitely use your bone folder. That is weird. Oh goodness. It's wanting to bend to this one on that inner line. So it's just not going to look as crisp, but you just got to really pay attention to that. Okay. This happened too with the hexagon box. I remember when I was folding it, I might not have mentioned it, but I did notice it. With this one, it's very noticeable, which is kind of funny because it didn't emboss that well enough, but now two lines embossed on this one, right? So somebody had asked me, like I said, to use the box making option on the Ultimate Pro, and I said I didn't include that in my video review of the Ultimate Pro, even though I had that thing for like, since it came out, maybe 15 years or however long. Uh, maybe 12, 13 years, I don't remember. But, um,. I said I didn't do that part because that's like the most basic thing it does and it's pretty easy. All you have to do is line up, you know, your numbers. 
where you want as far as what size box you want. But I am going to do that because I like requests and sometimes it gives me ideas of other things to do. So I'll do that. It's pretty basic, but it's pretty... It'll be fun. I do like using the Ultimate Pro, especially if you just want to get your hands dirty instead of just having a machine or something like that or like this cut out a box for you. Alright. And again, I would use a wet glue to be honest, even with the glue runner. I like a wet glue for box making. But we're trying to do this quickly so I can show you. And so this is the other thing that's kind of a bummer about this box is that I... Let's see. Not before I say anything, let's see. <laughs> I'm assuming it just goes right on top and it's the same... Yeah. So you don't even see the black underneath, as you see. So what's nice about the Ultimate Pro or uh, any kind of box maker, manual box maker, is that you can make the bottom box a little bit deeper so that it shows like this, right? A little bit. You know what I'm saying? If that's what you want, or even more. just depends on what you want to do. But this one completely gets covered up. So there's that. There's no aperture, but if you wanted to make an aperture before you fold up the box the way I did right now, because obviously it's already put together, I'll have to tear it apart. Just take whatever, um, let's see, whatever dies you might have. And if you want to make like an opening, let's say you want like a heart shape opening, before you close it up, right, when it was still flat, I would take this, run it through my machine, and then just add in the back a piece of acetate, um, you know, so that you, you can see through it. it looks, especially if you're putting something in here that's like a little snack or a little goodie. But you don't even have to cover it with acetate. It just looks nicer. I mean, you can just make a hole and have an aperture, and that's okay. And you have a card inside. That'd be cute. You don't have to use plastic. Again, you don't have to use acetate. You can use um, packaging. This kind of stuff you would use perfectly easily. Just cut it up. Um... So I think, I mean, that's basically it. So what I want to see is if I have a standard A2 size card around. I think all the cards that I have sitting in front of me are like not <laughs> A2 size cards. Not that one. Not this one. Nope. Uh, this one is not, but it's a little card. <laughs> right? You can put that in there. Uh, this one I made yesterday. Well, I made both of these yesterday. That one doesn't quite fit. And that's just the uh, stand-up cards we made yesterday. Let me... Oh my goodness, do I not have an A2 size card sitting around here? I think I have to actually pause the video and go look for one. Let me go look for one and I will be right back. Okay, so I was just putting things away before I made this video because I was cleaning up and I remember seeing this cute little card from Carol Quick. So thanks Carol because now I have something to show here. So, all right. Now you see this is four and a quarter by five and a half. So as far as the length, we're good. The width, we're not good, <laughs> okay? I mean, it can sit in there. It's just gonna be at an angle. And then you put your lid on. So it is still hold the card, it's just not, and this is the biggest it, go, it gets, right? So with the square, again, the square I think will be fine. But this one, the inner rectangle one is super tiny. I, mean, I don't even know what you would put in there. I guess a little jewelry. It would be good for jewelry, that little one. Cause like, let's say you make a little necklace or somebody or bracelet, perfect. Um, what's funny about this though, is that it fits in the top one just fine. Because the top one's slightly bigger than this bottom one. So in the top, hey, there you go. But um, <laughs> again, it won't really fit. It just has to be at an angle. So it'll still work. So hopefully that helps you guys out. Um, again, I didn't really cut out any of the tags and I didn't know if I was going to and I probably just won't because it's not the biggest deal, but um, but they do layer up if you wanted to layer like, sorry for my poor editing, I was going to mention something about the tags, but then I realized, duh, they are double-sided. I was just going to say like, these don't really layer up on top of each other very well, but they're double-sided. So again, put whatever color you want in the back, put another color on the front side, run it through, and now you have your double-sided um, tag. And that, I mean, layered, I guess, you don't want to say double-sided, but like, uh, let me show you, like here. Those two are very close together to each other, this layer and the back layer. So all you do is just cut them out together, uh, again, double-sidedly, and then you have a perfectly layered tag. So that's kind of nice because you have one, two, three that make three individual tags. Um, but what I was going to mention is that you could use this to um, cut an aperture, I guess, if you wanted to, because you can cut the rectangle on the one side. Still run it through with the double side, you know, with the uh, same sandwich. Um, and then you're going to have a rectangle of different sizes if you want to use different ones. Oh, a little peekaboo one, like at the top. That'd be, that'd be cute. So, 
thanks for watching guys i hope that helps um i will definitely do another video actually following up with this one uh of using the ultimate pro to make a box and uh, thanks for the request and then i will get to making a video i guess like i said of some other different things obviously that i have coming in from hsn but um what the difference is between the uh types of stamps so thanks for watching guys i'll see you at the next one bye now